I'm Danny Gatton, and I'm from Washington, D.C., and I'm here to teach you how to play guitar in probably some ways that you've never heard anybody play it before, uh, mainly the picking techniques that I use, right hand, that I've taught myself over the years, heavily influenced by rockabilly players and jazz players and western swing and top 40 and just about anything there ever was, I've played it. Uh, I haven't toured with that many people that are well known with the exception of... Uh, country great Roger Miller and Robert Gordon from New York City where we're filming this. And the first thing I'm going to show you here is something about putting strings on your guitar because most people don't put the strings on properly. If we can get a close shot of these tuners, when you put strings on, especially on a fender, you should leave as much string around the tuner as you can. You don't have to perform any magic knots or anything. You just put it in there and wrap it up with a peg winder until it's all the way down to the bottom of the peg and then pull on each one of them. I've pulled mine before here, but let's see. See how that went flat? So you have to do that to each one. Now, if you've put new strings on your guitar and you can't find a pitch to tune it to, this may sound strange, but the dial tone on a telephone is F. So if you pick up the phone and you hear F, you can tune your big E string here to F. That's what you'll hear on the phone, something close to that. Then you will come up four frets on the E string to A, and you will get an A. So you tune your A string. Now, when you have your A in pitch, you can take, you can lower your E string back down to E. And that is the fifth fret, double for that. Now, the tuning method that's worked best for me over the years is to use this version of an A chord. And here's a prime example of what it's good for. My first string's a little bit sharp. Rather than tune down on the tuner, because if I tune down on the tuner, as soon as I wail on this thing, it's going to go flat. So if you have to tune it down, bring it, bring it up to pitch, and do not pass the pitch or it will slip on you. Also, if it's a little bit sharp, you can just tug it down into pitch. Okay, right now I want to talk to you about picks, for instance. Now, geez, about 15 years ago, I used to use thin medium-sized picks and fender rock and roll strings, regular gauge. And then an old friend of mine, Roy Buchanan, who was picking a telly at that time, I wasn't, was playing a Les Paul, not that there's anything wrong with that. But he said, try these little jazz picks. They are heavy jazz picks. I'm not endorsing these things for anybody in particular, because a lot of different companies make them, but they're thick. They don't bounce around a whole lot, and you can get anything you want out of them because they're not too floppy. Now, I had these knobs custom made for this guitar. They're reproductions of Fender Broadcaster knobs, and they're made out of stainless steel, and they have a particularly heavy knurl cut into them, so I can take these picks like this and scratch them on the knob, 
and cut grooves in it so the thing won't fall out of my hand so much. Also, for another thing for you guys that smoke or that play in nightclubs, you can, cigarette ashes on the tips of your fingers works good when you get sweaty fingers to keep from dropping your pick, too. Another thing here, fingernails. I play with a flat pick and uh, all three fingers, and you have to have a certain length of nails. Mine aren't very long, but they don't have to be for what I do. So to play the different styles that I play, I have to use all of my fingers to do it. Not that I don't flat pick, I do that too, we'll get into that in a minute though. <laughs> 